Hello, it's Nalfkar and welcome to my edit of latest panel from hell. So this is the really showcase live stream and I did pick up the I think the most important and the most exciting information they revealed. So first of all uh, there is some character creation and uh, information about the uh, classes in the game. Also, uh, on top of that, some character customization options that are completely new if you have played Early Access. They have basically created entire new character creation interface. Uh, and also you get information how the world reacts on your actions and more information about the origin characters and there is this <laughs> pretty interesting play, uh, way to play the game so there is a dark urge that that's, will be the next one and also as you know you can like take out your companions if you go to the dark side uh, there will be hirelings that you can use and one at least one for every class and you can basically uh, I think you can spec them as you wish level up and so on and also uh, as you see in background is the camp and now you can have a completely different camp clothing when you are in your camp you don't have to wear armor there will be more information about that and also <laughs> they announced finally we getting clothes for our characters, so I have been waiting those. And also more information about the romances in the game. You can do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and there is uh, also a newspaper system uh, called Baldur's Mouth. So basically that, that thing will uh, affect how the people will react to you in the Baldur's Gate and stuff like that. So, by the way, there will be some spoilers in this video. Uh, and at the end of this video there will be some Act 2 gameplay. So, if you don't want to see that, you can skip it. But anyways, you want the information, so... <laughs> that's why you are watching this, I think. And also, Garlack will be one of the companions and a couple of scenes with her and also there is uh, more about the romance stuff uh, Astario and Halsing getting some action and Halsing will be in bear form so I needed to cut that a little bit because I don't think YouTube will like all the content in that scene and also there is several uh, there's three uh, difficult modes so basically there's the normal that we, if you play the early access, it's the normal difficulty, story mode, I think, uh, which makes your gameplay easier if you just wanna enjoy the story, and there is a tactician mode uh, if you really wanna, wanna challenge yourself in the battles. And there's that, you can, you get more information about that, and also some gameplay with the monk class so they made some uh, improvements on the basic uh, monk in D&D it should be uh, better balanced and a little bit more powerful than it used to be also you see glimpse of the split screen and some multiplayer action and there in the live stream there was a uh, making of the stories and cinematics. I did cut that out, but you can. I will leave the link uh, to the original video so you can check it out after this one. And after that, uh, there's some gameplay from the Act 2. So that was interesting. Uh, that will con contain some major spoilers, at least from that point of the game. So, if you don't wanna watch it, let it play, <laughs> put it on mute or something, I go make some food. And that's 
that's the video. And by the way, on, on top of that, they didn't show, but there is some alchemy for in the final game uh, where that you can like make it enchantments for your weapons and maybe some die dice or something like that. Uh, but I have no information because I haven't played the full game yet. So, anyways, I hope uh, you enjoyed this edit. Uh, I made it for you so you can get the four hour <laughs> video in two two hours. So I did cut a lot of the uh, talking and stuff out and made it as fluent as I could for you guys. So enjoy. Every choice that you make in character creation has an influence on the way the story will play later. Before you even start the game, the game is ready to react to you based upon the character that you have created. First and foremost, we of course adding some new races, uh, which has long awaited half orcs and dragonborns with some of the unique customization options. And I'm really happy with how our Dragonborns currently look and uh, animate. We will teach you everything you need to know to like hit the ground running with a character that you feel happy to play. It's not a superficial engine. You aren't just making aesthetic choices about your character. You're defining their identity. So if you choose your class, your race, your pronouns, any of these things that you choose in there, they will be not only honored through the game, but they will impact your experience. Classes are very central in the process of playing D&D. For us, it was super important to hit the class fantasy. For release, Baldur's Gate's class system is like stupidly deep now. We've got 12 classes, 46 subclasses. On average, oh, like every class has three subclasses, but with Cleric and a Wizard, they have like seven subclasses and eight subclasses like respectively. And also you can mix and match on, like for all of them, like multi-classing is a feature in our game. Within that, we've tried our best to like include as much content from Player's Handbook as possible. I think we've got something like over 600 spells and actions uh, available to the player, so you're never going to be short for options. One thing we want to make sure is that every class and subclass has a toolkit. They feel like they're not being shortchanged on at all. One of the brilliant things about this game is that when you make a choice about your class, it isn't purely a gameplay choice. It won't just affect combat, but it will actually affect the dialogues. For example, I know with the Warlock class, we've done a lot of work to develop how that will interact with dialogue choices. So you now have the option to call on your patron to get some insight, some advice in situations that might lend you an advantage. Probably the best example of how your class can impact the storyline is that every druid character or characters with animal speaking spells can talk to every animal in the game. There are dozens and dozens of animal based conversations and quest lines that you just wouldn't be able to access if you weren't playing as that class. If you're a barbarian, your, your whole skill set lends itself to being loud and just using force. What class you've picked will change how you experience the game throughout. Right, so for surprise number one of the night, we have completely revamped character creator. Uh, we're going to chat a little bit with Alina, who's our lead character artist, with Adam, uh, one of our lead writers, well, the lead writer actually, Crystal, associate lead writer, and uh, Nick, who is our lead systems designer. So we'll start with you, Nick. Uh, no, we'll start with you, Alina. Uh, <laughs> we are, are going to start making a custom character. We're going to have a look at all of the new options that are there, and at the same time, we're going to explore uh, the new character creation screen. Um, Let's start, start with the elf, I believe. Yeah, uh, so here you can see our beautiful racial lineup. And uh, some of you already have spotted some new races, which uh, we're going to dive into. Yeah. Uh, but maybe before that, we can also uh, show you what we added. So let's do that. maybe like for each race, let's show one new customization option as we progress. So let's start with elves. What would you customize on elves if you would start? Uh, so for elves, I want to show you our uh, kind of skin customization options. So we added maturity, mm -hmm. which is a slider, which can make you a bit older. We have freckles and freckles intensity. So you can really be unique in your look. And we, of course, have vitiligo pigmentation. All right, cool. All right, let's move on. Let's have a go have a look at the next one. All right. Tieflings. Ne Tieflings, yeah. Uh, so, uh, some of you might have guessed, but we've added horn customization. Well, 
you already could customize how your horns look, but now you can customize your horn color and even your horn tip color. All right. Shall okay, we get excellent. this purple? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I like the, the purple horn. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. All right, let's move onwards. Okay. Drow character. Mm -hmm. So uh, for Drow character, uh, we can show you uh, some of the scarring options that we have. And uh, not only we added some additional customization option, but as you can see now, you can actually see what you customize. Okay. Now. So there are some beautiful icons. Excellent. All right, let's move forward. All right, humans. So um, what we want to showcase for humans is actually uh, more hair options. Uh, so now it's a really long list to scroll. Mm -hmm. And you can finally see what you're picking as well, because uh, the hair in the so game many is, options. The hair is really, really special and amazing. But it's, it's a lot of work, right, to get every single hair in there? Uh, the work is like really intense. Uh, one hairstyle can take a lot of time because you basically hand place in each and every hair, like in the place, in the position. It's much harder than you know doing like a hairdo. <laughs> uh, I can I, I can imagine. All right, let's move onwards. All right, Kisyanki. My favorites. Yeah, actually, let's go. Oh, my second the... favorites now. Yeah. You changed that. <laughs> uh, with Gisyanki, uh well, I wanted to show our hair um, coloring options as well. So this is something that we added in early access. Uh, so you can have three hair colors. Uh, you can have your natural hair color. You can have your um, highlight. And then you can have a uh, gray in color. And we're adding more colors on release, actually. Uh, so it's going to give you the opportunity to, you know, have a three-colored hair. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move forward. All right, dwarfs. Uh, well, of course, I want to showcase some facial hair for the dwarfs. There are a couple of extra options if you uh, want to pick them. <laughs> some nice bushy beards. The bushy beard. <laughs> yeah. Some silly beards, of course. Uh, I like that one. <laughs> let's go for that one. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. All right. Half elf. So with half elf, uh, actually, I want to showcase the body type. It's true. Yeah, uh, we haven't shown the body type. So now, uh, not only you can be well, just the regular body type, but also the strong body type. Finally. Indeed. Yeah. Buff. <laughs> All right. Move onwards. All right, half lengths. Uh, for half lengths, well. It's half lengths. You want yeah. to throw them around. I mean, that's literally the thing with half lengths, right? I you would know, imagine what so. Would I prefer even over throwing half lengths? Your sure. next one. Grand gums. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, with gnomes. So they are really, really easy to throw away. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, we can show you uh, one extra thing that we've added to uh, our body art tab, uh, which is piercings, uh, which uh, yeah. are also available for all of the races. OK, cool. All right, you've been busy. Go ahead. <laughs> what else do you have? You have orcs there? Half orcs, yes. Oh, they look very cool. Yeah. So with half orcs, uh, I do recommend going with everything. You know, add a tattoo, add a piercing design, and obviously um, you can't have a half orc without a good scar. So let's go with that. All right, very cool. Okay, let's move onwards to the race that everybody's been playing ever since we introduced it here in the studio. Hey, uh, are you guys ready? Absolutely. <laughs> Drum roll. <Let's> go. <laughs> Definitely. Show them. Dragonborns. Here they are. So Dragonborns is actually our most technically challenging race because other races are humanoids. These guys are reptiles. Took insane amount of efforts to get them right, to make their scales perfect, to color them. Like it's yeah, it's been truly a journey <laughs> making been, these uh, guys. Very long one, but they look fantastic. Yeah. And you can customize a lot about your dragon heads, right? Yeah. Uh, there are a couple of attachments you can pick from, and all of the attachments work on all of the heads. Mm -hmm. And of course, there is a skin color, uh, which uh, like yeah, we added a bunch of very exciting options for you guys. Uh, the are metallic skin colors, like kind of duochrome skin colors. Uh, but what uh, we added on top of that is for a white dragonborns, we added pearlescence effect. I can't, I can't even pronounce it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's really, really cool. Yeah. Adds like this special sheen to you. All right. Makes you especially cool. 
right. And can you switch uh, genders? Yes. See. Okay, cool. Can you zoom in? Mm -hmm. All right. They're so, 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 so cool. I mean, I've been playing with Dragonborn the entire time. I was a shadow uh, monk Dragonborn today. It was really, really cool. All right. Something we forgot to mention. There is a heterochromia now. So your eyes could be a different color. Well, another word I can't uh, pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, uh, um, well, for one subclass, um, we also added, like, a special uh, kind of, like, touch for Dragonborns, because you might uh, want to, like, you might have a question, like, how uh, the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer would look if you're a Dragonborn, because normally you would get uh, Draconic Scales, but you're covered in scales, so what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> so, for that... Sorcerer. Nick. So we added uh, a special pattern uh, that also changes color, right. depending on your uh, ancestry. Yeah. So you can truly be like a duochrome dragonborn, and then you can throw in a draconic bloodline pattern and like be, you know, the prettiest member of your party. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing what character our team has done on this. They look fantastic. Merits a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It's really, really good. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Um, So one of the things we really wanted to do is to make sure that anybody who didn't play D&D before, didn't play Larian games before, they still had a good time, they still had a comfortable time. There is a lot of new information, and we tried to present it in steps, in bite-sized pieces that you can go through step by step, creating your character in a very clear manner. Yep. Okay, well, take us through it. What do we get? Uh, well, something I wanted to talk about are the classes. You mentioned that uh, Systems has a few things. Yeah, 46 things is the number of subclasses that we're shipping yeah. uh, at release. Uh, and we try to make sure that for every class, um, no matter which class is your favorite class, at release there's going to be a new subclass for you to play, some, some new play style that you can enjoy. For example, if you really like Paladins, uh, one of the new oath, the new oath for them is uh, the Oath of Vengeance. Uh, so you don't have to be the just the knight in shining armor anymore. You can be out for revenge. All right. Well, maybe give us a small tour of the subclasses. Like if for each class, just mention which subclasses they are and just cycle through them. Because team animation has also done something very special when it comes to uh, the character creation. So if you take a bard, for instance. Uh, yes, the, the classes now introduce themselves yeah. very nicely. We, we're trying to really get you into the fantasy of a class and, and communicate what the class is even without the, the text on the screen, just by looking at it, you understand what the, the druid is going to be about in nature, right? All right. So which are the subclasses are you most excited about? Uh, I'm most excited about the subclass that is not in character creation. It's going to come a little bit later, but it's a Gloomstalker Ranger. It's a sneaky, shooty type uh, that I, I'm uh, really enjoying playing, actually. All right. So it's coming later because that's per the Dungeons and Dragons rules, so yes, you don't indeed. get to pick everything at the beginning of the game. Yes, yes. So some classes get their subclass at level 2 or level 3. Yeah, okay. But they're all present. So 48 classes, really a lot to choose from. Uh, so if I'm playing the game and I make a mistake here, Yes. Like, what's going to happen? Like, am I, do I need to restart the game or what? So we wanted to avoid players having to restart the whole game because it's a, it's a very heavily narrative experience. Uh, and there is a character that you might meet, uh, you will most likely meet, uh, that will allow you to reset your class. Okay. Uh, and just restart, reinvest all of the levels. This also allows you to really experiment with multi-classing, which is a new feature that we're also shipping at release. Mm -hmm. In multi-classing, there are a lot of really cool combinations. There are some combinations that don't quite work, and we want the players to really experiment with what is possible. And uh, respec really helps with that. Yeah, jump uh, then to backgrounds. Uh, backgrounds uh, that shape together with class and racial uh, choices what dialogue options you're going to have. And you, Crystal, your team has been very active on introducing those. They things. have. They've been very diligent on it. Uh, the, the, you, you've, you've spent your first six hours of the game making this beautiful, complex character. You've given, you fit your class, you fit your race, you fit everything down to the eyelashes, whatever you want. Uh, and then you put them in the game, and, and you want the world to react to your identity that you've yeah. put out there. You've expressed yourself. The game has to recognize that. 
that. Uh, so what we noticed was you could be a, an alien Githyanki uh, sorcerer, uh, a drow warlock, uh, 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 you know, a, a dragonborn bard, and you're just wandering into the elf song, and you sit down, and no one has anything to say about that. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I agree. So, yeah. So we went all the way through Act One to Act Three, and we made sure that we built in the reactivity to all the dialogues and in the moments where it would matter. The and it's not only reactivity; it's actually also full permutations of yeah. situations yeah, yeah. that was added to it. So somebody told me that uh, when we calculate the word count and the line count that went into Act One into Early Access, and we compare it to today, uh, your team has added over one third, 33 percent more lines in there. Is that correct? I'm afraid that it is. <laughs> <laughs> is this because you've been talking to the finance team about the budget for all the voice recording and the cinematics and the motion? <coughs> that this no comment. Uh, okay, well, good. But it is, it is actually, I have to say, I, I, I played through. Uh, I've been playing a lot, but I mean, I've played through as a gift druid. And it was a completely different experience as if I was playing with my draw. So I was really impressed, actually, by how much has been added and how much deeper it feels now as a result uh, as an, an experience. All right, so uh, we've got one person left on the stage. Uh, we have something new, which is the origin characters. Nick, can you jump to the beginning of the tab, which we didn't talk about yet? The Adam, first tab. Why don't you so the explain. Yes, yeah, so you can create your custom character. You can also meet a lot of people on your adventure that you can recruit. So if you've played Early Access, I know you've met Asteri, I know you, you met Shadowheart, you now met Kalak. Uh, you can also play as these people. Mm -hmm. So when you meet Asterion, there are things about him that you don't know, that he keeps close to his chest. You usually find out what they are when he tries to bite you. And then you think, oh my god, how did I not see it? He's a vampire. <laughs> if you play as Asterion, you are the vampire. So you know from the very beginning of the game that you're a vampire. So you can bite people. So if I'm Shadowheart, if you're Shadowheart, and I got let's this pretend. big secret, <laughs> yeah, 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 big, big secret, very, not, very, very, not on my armor at all. Knows, no, it's not. It's hidden. And, and I, because I mean, I've played all the way to Act Two, and she didn't tell me. She didn't tell you her big but she secret. Didn't, she didn't yeah, trust yeah, it's because she doesn't like you. But uh, I think she likes me. She, <laughs> she doesn't, doesn't like trust you. Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll talk about I that later. I may um, have done things that would have caused her not to trust me, but anyway, let's not talk about so that. So if you were Shadowheart, yes. then you may not trust the people around you either. So you may not tell them your big secret. I get that option? You have the option. You can tell them. You can decide, I think it's time to tell them. And depending on how much they like you, they may react well, they may react badly. So dialogue, people react to you differently, but also sometimes when you go to sleep at night, you might remember things or you might have haunting dreams or nightmares about your past. I know why you said that. I did say that for a reason. We got a video. Roll video. <laughs> <laughs> the forest, dark, cold, foreboding. Hello? Anyone there? First. Thou shalt not drink the blood of thinking creatures. Second, thou shalt obey me in all things. Where are you? Show yourself! Third, thou shalt not leave my side unless directed. Your heart pounds, but you're ready. He's going to regret coming for you. Fourth, thou shalt know that thou art mine. Three, lie to yourself, boy, but not to me. You are mine forever. The Dark Urge is a fully customizable origin avatar character. You can play as whatever species, class, build, appearance, gender that you would like to, and still have the character's origin story working on top of that. It's an avatar-only character, so it means it's just a character that you can play as, and you don't know what this character is. This character is someone who's waking up and the only feelings that they have are the bile of their liver, the gushing of their blood in their ruined body, telling them you're going to kill and kill again. The Dark Urge, in a lot of ways, is a dark counterpoint to the main storyline. Play with the concept of why are we always so compelled to 
do terrible things in video games in the first place. For my first full playthrough at launch, I think I would probably play The Dark Urge. I'm a little bit scared to see what I would learn about myself, but I think that's part of the, part of the fun of it. <laughs> All right. OK, right. Uh, you're going to show us a small, 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 small slice of Dark Rush, because we don't want to spoil it for players. Fine. Right? So really small. But this is at the beginning of the game. So it is a spoiler, but it's so at the beginning of the game that I think it's not that much of a spoiler. All right, go ahead. Indeed. So uh, I'm exploring the crash site. You've probably seen it in Early Access. And as Dark Rush, I've already um, recruited Shadowheart, and I've uh, come across some goblin corpses. So of course, I'm going to loot them. Um, so let's do them. Some stuff. I take it. You drink in the pungent corpse. Since you awoke on the ship, your mind has been cold and empty. But something stirs with your hands close to this body. You know nothing of why, but find a half smile flittering across your face. Let the grin fall across your face or push the smile away. Are we fighting it, Sven? We are not fighting Me? it. Me? Never. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm a lizard, right? So I can't even stop smiling. It's just... <laughs> this feels like home. There's something unknown and unspeakable deep within your heart. All right. All right. All right. Spooky. Having some dark urges here. Uh, <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. And here's uh, another little thing that is a bit different from early access. Uh, this little portal. Uh, why don't we click on it? You approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. Oh, dangerous. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely touching it. <laughs> Well, a hand? Anyone? Mm. So that's different already from what we had in early access, right? This is the recruitment scene of Gale. Yes. He used to jump out. Now suddenly we see a hand pop out. Indeed. All right, so and we have a few, uh, a few things we could do. Uh, we could ask, who are you? Or slap the hand away. Uh, but the unique thing for Dark Urge is to fantasize about hacking off the hand. You're only thinking about it. Hold right on, give me two seconds. I'm just checking what chat is doing. I can the see chat. what you're chat. doing. I chat. See a lot I've of never ones, seen chat. so many ones in my I life. I am not disappointed in chat. It's like binary no, 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 code. No, it's all ones. <laughs> all right, OK. So. So, someone has slapped it. But. All right. Right, so what, what bad can just thinking about it do, right? This branch of flesh is begging to be pruned and it's sap sucked from. My mistress' eyelids stop! Cease, you loon! Ah! Ah! As soon as the dreams cross the threshold of your imagination, you snap back to realize they have all come true. You were supposed to lend a hand, not take one. Check it out soon. You were dazed on the Nautilus, but now you are truly awake, alive. So um, this can be a very lonely journey. I, I like his hands-on approach, but... <laughs> Let's give Nick a hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Been sitting on this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is a game that where you can just kill your companions like that. And then you can just continue journey your heads. And so there's more companions. There's more companions. <laughs> well, right. well, what if all the companions die, Nick? What do I do then? Uh, you can hire hirelings. Uh -huh. If you run out, uh, there's 12 more hirelings for uh, your dark urges. <laughs> you can really fill that camp with corpses. Right. Uh, so, so, so that means you get one for every class, subclass, and yes. then you can... Higher links are just custom characters of each of the classes. In case you want to fill out your party or you want a party of all barbarians, let's say, um, you can go for that. All right, excellent. And then uh, you can respect them also, I guess. Indeed, you can respect them as well. All right, excellent. Um, I think you want to show us one last thing of Dark Earth because, and then we'll just can move you just on. check your inventory, Nick? Check my inventory. Yeah. Yeah, look at it. There yes. 
yeah, trophy. So, it's, it's, what, what is this? To go better go to sleep at night? Uh, well, <laughs> under your cheek, I guess. <laughs> A memento of Gale. I think I, I, I need to lay down, okay? All right. Before you go to sleep, I would like you to show a little bit of camp clothes, if you can. Yes, so uh, you will see that when you go to camp now, you're wearing something more comfortable than your metal armor. As you can see on Sven, it's oh. not, not incredibly comfortable. It's to new sleep armor. On. It is a new armor. Look at me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like a new armor. It's very loud. It's a summer armor. Very new, very loud yeah. armor. All right. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, nobody can sleep in that. Um, so you can slip on something more comfortable, like these pants. Uh, Dragonborn would like to go shirtless, I suppose. Um, these items are just clothing that you can uh, equip. You can find more in the world. You can apply dyes to them as well. So you can customize how you look in camp. And if you really want to, you can also keep wearing it outside of camp as well uh, with this little uh, switch right here. All right, cool. So everybody has camp clothes you can buy, you can go and shop. Yes, you can go shop, you can buy them. Uh, all of the Origins have a unique pair as well, mm -hmm. which was a lot of work for the character team, I'm, I'm sure. Yes, it was. <laughs> do you have my um, the thing I asked you, or do you not have it? My little so many cloak. Things. My cloak. Oh, no, I don't have a cloak. Oh, it's okay, it's all right, never mind. All right. I, I, I like that cloak. Anyway. Yeah, uh, cloaks are a thing, by the way. Uh, cloaks were not there in early access. Oh, yes, true. We're going to have cloaks. But we don't <laughs> have one right now. We'll show it. Uh, all right. <laughs> and, find a place. And you can recolor all of it, but with dye. You can apply colors it. to clips. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. If we when if we get there, we'll see how this stream goes. Make sure that we remember to put on some face paint also, because I really enjoy face painting. Uh, it's really. We'll cool. see. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So uh, that's clothes. Uh, let's go sleep. Let's go sleep. I just do a partial rest. As you writhe with sickly dreams, a deep dread floods you. Though you have a tadpole, you know your broken mind is not like the others who bear the worm. A few scraps of the past come back to you now and then. And you can never quite tell where the knowledge comes from. Inexplicable, violent yearnings overwhelm all other thoughts. Who could you possibly be to be their vessel? All right. Think upon your heritage. Is there truth hidden there? The ancestral of your dragon clan is diluted amid the liquid hate in your blood. It must have been a very long time among your kind when you try to think of a home. Your mind twists itself back to indulge in the delights of the day. You recall waking up, hearing the pounding war drum of blood. How much you treasured the sight of the first corpse you took. The waggling stump you left of that wizard's arm. Do we swear to resist? Or do we lean in? No, 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 no. Lean in, lean in. Lean, we'll lean deeper. Yeah. Uh, we'll let the player, players will resist anyway. Aroused, We're going. Imagining a broken, twisted Chats neck. And a thrill thinking of a intestine. As these images flood your mind, you fall soundly asleep like a babe in arms. Blood. 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 <laughs> I think there's a message, message there. All right. Dark Urge, uh, let's give Nick a hand. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, um, Dark Urge, dark side of Baldur's Gate 3. There's many dark sides on it. Not for the meek of heart, just warning you. Uh, it goes very brutal. It can go very, very, very brutal when you play Dark Urge, but it's just the game living up to the choice and consequences of your choices. You can always resist, so whenever you go somewhere, it was your choice to go there. How do romances work in real life? You don't just do someone's quest and say some nice things and then get a sex scene. When we've been developing romance scenes in Baldur's Gate 3, we've been trying to show two people genuinely struggling through a hard time and supporting one another. And you're not going to be the same person as you are in Act 1 as you are in Act 3. 
Neither is your partner. Your relationship is going to have to grow along with the game's story. The relationships that you can have with party members in this game, it's a little bit like the relationships you have in your actual life. Uh, if you are going to be an asshole to them, then you can expect them to react to that kind of assholery that you've inflicted on them. Um, if you're going to be good to them, then you have the opportunity to bond with them. They can open up and share their stories. You can get closer, start relationships with some of them as well. It can go the other way, so it's perfectly possible that you'll do something and one of your companions will say, no, I'm not going to adventure with you anymore. Or even, this is the point where I think it's necessary to just kill you, and then they will try to do that. Sometimes it's actually better also to have an argument and challenge your partner about their way of thinking, because if you just go along with what they want to do, you might end up getting sacrificed in an evil god's sex rite, you might end up getting turned into a vampire, or worst of all, you might even end up getting married. So watch out, but be yourself and don't treat the romance like it's just a quest. Companion characters have the potential to grow and develop in interesting ways. And indeed, the thing that makes them, that often kind of incites that within them or uh, can kind of nudge them along the journey or, or block them on that journey is you, the player. And it is very much you who is influencing how they develop and who they become. My party members, they're not just following me blindly because I'm the person who's playing this game. They're following me by choice. And sometimes those choices result in them not fully trusting me. And I think that is such a, a satisfying experience. Different quests are going to matter to different members of your party. So if you take you know, a particular combination of companions versus on one playthrough versus a different combination on another playthrough, um, you're going to find that the party is interested in different quests, and then you're going to find yourself being pulled towards the different areas and different quests that matter to them. And I think in that sense, you're going to get a very different overall experience. And uh, we're going to take a little walk around. One of our friends is Karlak, who we're quite close to in this version. We, uh, we bought a newspaper before, so let's have a read of that. Um, uh, hello? Does, uh, does anyone want to buy a gazette? <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the newspapers then? I will, yes, for sure. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I like how you asked that. Uh, so, um, we've got a newspaper system in this city. Uh, it's going to react to your actions. It's going to talk about the stuff that you've been doing. Uh, what I really like about the newspaper is that you can manipulate it. So, you can start, uh, you can basically break into the printing house and you can start swapping stories around. There will be a big surprise when you do that. Uh, and the game is going to react to that. The stuff that goes into the newspaper affects what the citizens of the city are going to think about you. Uh, so, here it's early days because she's just arrived in the city. And to be fair, she cheated into the city. Uh, but just for the purposes of uh, this particular representation. Uh, so, but yes, uh, Baldur's Mouth, uh, your one stop news. Uh, one stop, stop for news Shop. thing kind of thing. <laughs> All, right. All right, Crystal, go and ahead. And that newspaper was in 60 frames per second. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're actually approaching the Boulder's Mouth. So we're yeah. in deep in the city, lots of things going on. Yeah. Uh, as we're moving through the city, where are we? Here we are. Yeah. Uh, you can see all these snippets of life around the area. There's a lot of, uh, maybe you want to talk about that actually. There's a lot of voice going on oh, there's in the city. A, there's a huge amount. I mean, I, I don't know how well you can hear it, but there's, there's constant conversation, there's a hubbub. It, it feels like a real city, I hope. I mean, it does to us. Uh, it's a very busy place, so you'll hear people talking. Uh, somebody actually asked me how hard was it to have the team side, write all these lines. Oh, yeah. you want me to, oh, I'm talking too much. Sorry, no, no, it's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just going the wrong direction. Oh, Chris, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big more. city. It's easy to get lost. <laughs> but uh, somebody asked me how hard it was to fill the city with so much noise. Uh, oh, and I actually, was wrong. Was wrong. it did a good job for us. It actually makes our job easier because if you listen to the people talking, they're actually reacting to events the same way the newspaper does. So they'll be talking about the things that have been happening. You'll hear these snippets that uh, they help us to tell the story without you having to slow down, stop, and click on everyone. If you want to do that, you can. There's a lot of people to talk to in this city. Right. Including people that you might remember from uh, Act 1. That's Sorcerer Sundries, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so that's Aradin over there. Yep. And so his story continues here and uh, actually depends heavily on what you've done, what you did in Act 1. One of the things you're going to find when you're going to be uh, in the game is that a lot of the uh, things that you did 
during your journey and in the city and have an impact here. And it's insane how far that goes. There's a really a lot of reactivity to it. Uh, we don't want to spoil a lot, so we're not showing it to you, but you, you'll discover when you go in there. All right, go ahead. We're going to yeah. go and find an old friend of Karlak, I think. That looks like a familiar face over there. Yeah. My son Karlak. Oh, I wouldn't start. Yeah, okay, there you go. Gate. That can't possibly be you, can it? <gasps> Fitz! If oh. you want a sight for sore eyes. Can we start cut Where for a second? We forgot to de her? remove the debug context. Yes, I heard you'd run off to Neverwinter and that was what? <laughs> Everyone well, look at me. <laughs> don't don't go back to it or just go. Uh, hold on, I'll say I you know. <laughs> I just realized that all our cynic context is on the screen. So you don't want to see that chat. I'm sorry. We had to rush and restart everything, so therefore, okay, we're good again. We can go back. <laughs> good to you. Uh, I won't lie, they have. Should we let them catch up? Yeah. Well, go on, girl. Tell me everything. First thing first, you saw the news, didn't you? About Archduke Gortash. Right. Oh, I'm sure the fox will make a great duke of the hen house. I think you were the only thing that kept him a little honest. After you left, things got dark, fast. I got out while my soul was still intact. Started working for an arms merchant. Still in the trade, as you can see. Met my fellow Gregor that way. We've been together eight years now. And Karlach, we were a little one on the way. Fitz, that's incredible. Congratulations. Mum life, huh? You're going to be incredible. God, I hope so. Even after all these years, it seemed to happen so fast. But now that you're back in town, you must come to ours. All of you. We'll have a good supper, catch up. You can meet Gregor. And the little one, in a few months. Are the two of you together? Uh-huh. Isn't he handsome? Absolutely. You're well suited, I can tell, just by looking at you. Pleasure to meet you, by the way. I can't tell you how good it is to see you, Fitz. I'd love to come have dinner with you and Gregor. We're in the city on some urgent business, but can I come find you when it's all settled? I'd love that. Meanwhile, if you're still in the business of intimidation, you should take a look at my stock. All right. So, Karlak Kar is your partner here. Uh, I think you have to press space. Yeah. Great to have you. All right. Uh, so, uh, Karlak is your partner here. I think she's, uh, she still wants to talk to you. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go right ahead. Whoop. I cannot select. All's well that ends. No, not as bad as it could have. <laughs> hope that wasn't a lie. I hope we do get to meet up with Fitz when this is all over. First step. Save the city, then save myself, and last but not least, dinner with an old friend. What more could you ask for? Right. See, we're not always horrible, evil people. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So um, let's go to to camp, perhaps, and um, we're going to be sleeping on the docks because we didn't buy a room in the Elfson Tavern yet, which we could have done. Uh, and uh, you're going to go on a date, I think. With haste. Uh, Where's my beautiful tiefling? Mm. <laughs> Let's just check myself. Do I look all right? <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Maybe it'll bring us closer. Hey. Well, you want me to drive? <laughs> no, uh. that did not trigger what it was supposed to. Oh, so it's true, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, that's a, uh, that's a first. Okay, well, let's leave. And we're going to have to go back to sleep. <laughs> All right, well, our technical difficulties have set us in the wrong save game, apparently, uh, because they had to reboot the PC. And we wanted to show you... Oh, actually, it is... Might be okay. Oh, I think she's ready now. I think she's ready now. Uh, we're sorry about this. I mean, I this figured is... it out. Ah, there she's, we go. She's figured it out. What I want to do with you. All right. I'm very obedient. I want to go on a date. A first date. No weapons, no monsters, no mysterious voices. Just you and me and dinner. Please say <laughs> yes. 
I'd love to go out with you, Carla. Yes! Oh, amazing. <laughs> Let's go. Give me a beat to run ahead. I want to make sure everything's absolutely perfect. See you there. That's how you go on a date. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you made it. You look nice. <laughs> Why, thank you, so do you. Thank you. Hmm. Baldurian seafood stew. No, thank you. What do you think you'll have? What does chat want? Just what I had in mind. <laughs> two of the Rothe ribs, please. And two glasses of... What do you think, chat? Uh, Room says wine. All right. And two glasses of wine. Ah. <laughs> Predictable. <laughs> so, you're an adventurer, right? How's that going? <laughs> been around I know but this is our first date remember tonight you're a mystery to me <laughs> exactly anything you'd like to know about your enigmatic new paramour what do we reckon I don't know you pick secret Oh, that's easy. During year two of my fab's adventure in celibacy in Avernus, I once got so, um, pent up, I burnt down my field tent. <laughs> Blamed it on an imp and never told a soul the truth. Beat that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to make some new secrets between us then. <laughs> Here comes our food. <laughs> hey, uh, Hank, I think we ordered the... It's a bleeder. <laughs> Worst guy I ever met. <laughs> anyway, how about a toast? Oh, shit! May we live every day like it's our last. Because you never know when your last will come. Let's cut away there. Oh, that was <laughs> great. The well, fit. because we, we gotta get, we got a different. We are keeping it a secret for a purpose. So we have a bunch of people that saw this scene today, and so they really, really, really want to see what's gonna come next. Uh, <laughs> but we're gonna keep it for their own stream, so we're not gonna show it right now. However, however, we're not cruel either. Uh, we've got a other side of the spectrum when it comes to romance, and there we're not gonna intervene. We're gonna let chat fully decide, and we'll let you speak for chat what options you want to take. Adam is gonna take, okay, the lead. Uh, Content warning, mature game, all right? Some of really, you might really be uncomfortable about what's warning. about to come. Uh, so children, including my own children, turn your eyes away. and Your father is not at all involved in this. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. So, and we picked for this particular scene uh, two characters who have been super popular uh, during early access. Uh, we've picked uh, Astarian and Halsen. And so... Uh, we're going to... Um, things have evolved between them, all right? And so we're going to be, I believe, are we in Worms Crossing right now? Or we're in the lower city. We are in the lower city too, all yeah. right? So we're a different place in the lower city. So 
Take it away, Adam. I'll tell Asterians you what. Asterians ready for action. Uh, so we're in the lower city. Um, Halson came all the way here. He's not a big fan of the city. But here is my big strapping paramour. You wish to speak? Fine. Wait. No. Halson. <laughs> Your save game too? No, it's fine, I think. I think he just wants to wait until night time. Uh. <laughs> One last tease. <laughs> You came. I was concerned you might have had doubts, or that this might have all been too soon. It's up to you guys. <laughs> Three. Perhaps a little. Do you know how hard it's been for me to contain myself? I know I'm starting to touch you. If I give in, I may not be able to stop until I've devoured you. Four? <laughs> well, hold on, we'll give chat a chance. We'll give chat a chance. We can... We'll see where they want to go. One, one. I've seen I a, see lot a lot of ones. A lot of ones. Ah! Uh, yeah, I see one. one is the dominant number. It's gonna be one. <laughs> Nevertheless, I will be gentle. <laughs> Just as nature intended. Come here to me. So the first difficult mode is uh, Balanced. That's the one all you guys in Early Access will have already been playing on. Uh, it's just the default mode for someone who wants a bit of challenge, but not too much challenge, who still wants to see, it, see and enjoy the story. Um, then next up, we have Explorer mode. For those of you who aren't quite as interested in um, being challenged in the combat, you just want to see the story, get on with it, that's uh, the difficulty mode for you. And then finally, we got Tactician. I think a lot of people in the audience here, a lot of people on Twitch, are looking forward to that one the most. That's our hard mode. That's the one that's really going to challenge you in the combats and even outside of the combats in some ways. Um, yeah. And so, um, can you tell us a little bit what, what does tactician mean? Like, what does that do to the game when you play in tactician mode? Because it's not as simple as just like the HP has been buffed up, right? Yeah, so we kind of have it in two layers. So there's the base layer that all the characters in the game are going to get, so that is the basics like just increasing HP, making it easier for them to hit you. And then there's the local layer. The, so we've gone through every single combat in our game, and we've added in little bits of spice to make that combat shine just a little bit hotter um, and be that much harder. 
Okay, so I want to follow up on that, but maybe first, like, what is the philosophy of combat in our game? Because our combat is not just something, I just drop a couple of guys and I see what happens. There's a lot of engineering that goes into the creation of every single encounter that you're going to have. Is it about 300 or something like that? Oh, I've long since forgotten the number of combats in this game. Um, but yes, every single combat, uh, we, we don't place characters idly. Um, we have a philosophy around making each combat encounter a puzzle. Um, and well, puzzles are only solvable with the tools that you have. And what's so exciting about working in RPGs is every single party is going to have a different tool set to solve their puzzle with. It makes it very difficult to design sometimes, but uh, a lot of fun in the end. So uh, can you give us an example like of a simple puzzle? Like um, just what is like the basic puzzle? Yeah, so a, a puzzle can be as simple as you've got a big bugbear standing in front of your party, and behind him on a roof is a uh, goblin shooting down behind them. You've got to figure out how to neutralize the goblin so he can't shoot you while dealing with the bugbear. All right, so that means that if I have a, uh, I don't know, I mean like a party, let's say the monk, we just introduced the monk. Uh, what does the monk do when they are trying to, to deal with this particular puzzle? Yeah, so this is what I was talking about with having different tools to solve puzzles. So the monk is very cool because they have a passive called deflect missiles. So when a missile comes in, so an arrow from that goblin, uh, you can actually deflect it back at them uh, with a bit of luck. Uh, and take them out by yourself. So you don't actually need to care about that goblin as much. You're more worried about the, uh, the bugbear. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why you just don't throw fireball, but I mean, that's just me most likely. <laughs> uh, so um, so same battle. You just described it. Now I'm going into tactician mode. What changes? Aha. So the fun thing about tactician is we have so many different vectors to pull on to make the combat more engaging, more difficult, and to really enhance that puzzle. For example, we could put another roof and put a goblin on top of that roof. So now you have two goblins shooting down at you and you got to deal with the bugbear. Or maybe we give the bugbear a grenade and now he's able to do big explosions on you. Or we give the goblin in the back a fire arrow. Now he's going to blow things up. Or maybe we put some explosive barrels around you and you got to watch out for those. It's not for me, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's for you, and it's, I know it's for this team also. So you are going to be playing in normal mode first, in balance mode, and then we're going to switch to uh, tactician mode just to see what the delta is on this particular combat. However, uh, before we going to do that, I believe we have a little uh, clip that introduces the monk, because the two of you are going to be playing as a monk, the new class that has been introduced uh, to BG3. So let's have a look, uh, a look, yeah. Uh, let's have a look at that video and then jump to gameplay with these two star players. That's so good. Yeah, 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 I know. Monks in D&D are inspired by the monastic traditions of Tibet. You will be uh, basically a kung fu specialist. We looked at a monk and said, like, what are the key visions for a monk? Like, what do we want the monk to be? And we broke that down again. And I, I know this so well, I didn't even listen to Matt because I know exactly what I'm doing. All right. Okay, so whose move is this? Oh, it's my move. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is, so you may know this combat from early access. It doesn't have to be a combat like anything else, but you walk in here, these goblins ambush you. If you're a martial class, then sometimes you get pinned down by them in the middle there. But uh, monks are really fast. So uh, we've managed to dash up on the roof already. And uh, I'm going to deal with them. So flurry of punches, which looks badass. And that's one down already. Um, and then I'm also going to show some Dragon Bond stuff. And I'm going to burn this one with my breath. Oh, yeah, because that's a racial trait that you yeah, get as a Dragonborn. Yeah, OK. So right. this, this, this is a spellcaster, Buyag. So I'm going to stay close to him. Uh, so I get an opportunity, attack of opportunity on him. And I'm going to throw across to Alina. All right. Uh, well, I'm an elemental monk, I suppose, right? Yeah. Something like that. I'm a. What's you have very absolutely no idea what you're doing. So good. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've been, you know, uh, just introduced to the uh, mon class today. But anyhow, I'm going to try to deal with two goblins uh, on my side of the roof. And we're going to try to blow them both away. And, well, we succeeded at one, right? So that's good enough. That's better than I would. Right. Uh, it's not good enough. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh. That's fine. I'm OK. So this guy should try and run away from me, I'm hoping. Oh, there's another one down there, but that's fine. We can deal with all of these. So the good thing about the monk is the speed is what I love, because uh, I, it's my favorite class now, uh, genuinely. And uh, one of the things I like about it is the speed, because you can close on enemies really quickly. You do hit and run tactics. So while everybody else is prepping spells and doing all that stuff, and you run and you punch on, you get back into the shadows again. It's great. The gods are watching me. Right, now, I don't need to be super complicated about this. Matt promises me that it's going to get much more difficult on tactician. 
But uh, right now, we should be fine. So fine that I'm confident enough that I, oh, oh, sorry, I dashed. Oh, that's okay, yeah, so I'm gonna get down here and then I can jump through here, beat this guy up, we've won. Ignore the scream, <laughs> as, all as intended. All ninjas scream, this is what they do. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna dash with my. Oh, did I dash? Actually, well, I guess I did. I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Almost, almost got this one, Goblin. I can see the hands of the masters in action. It's impressive, right? Uh, uh, you want to put them in tactician mode? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, they've they've got it under control. We, we, we've done this in tactician mode half a time. Listen, and, my uh, mode is a story mode. So. <laughs> wait, what? what? <laughs> No, no, but uh, we, so I can get up here and I get this one cornered. These little ranged guys, it's just fun to beat up on them. So I do have other abilities, but I don't need them right now. I can cast Darkness as a Shadow Monk, so I can blind this guy. Uh, I've got Silence, so I can create a Sphere of Silence around myself. Useful for dealing with magic users. I've only got two hit points, I just noticed. That's not ideal. <laughs> Let's finish this one off, and uh, we'll, I guess, go help Adam. I don't need the <laughs> Looks like you're handling it, though. We're handling it very well. I mean, uh, the, again, the mobility is great because you get these little archers, and I mean, it, it's a goblin, so, oh, this is deflect missiles, so hopefully you can send this straight back at him. How cool is that? All right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> And then I will finish this one off. And that was a little bit too far. Uh, you finish this one off, All novice. Right. <laughs> it's fine, fine. I wanted to handle this on our own because I'm the master, and you know you need to you, you, you teach not by example but by. How what does it do to you, Matt, to see this in action? <laughs> uh, He's thrilled. You know what? I, I see a master like this teaching a young Padawan how to improve. It's very beautiful. Oh, right. I'm happy that it makes you happy. Okay, let's go tactician then. Yeah, let's Bye. reload and see you do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so not only will all the goblins now have fire arrows, uh, I've added a few little spicy explosive surprises all I'm around I'm still not listening to him. It's fine. We're yeah. going to be absolutely fine. And so, can you... So, what? Yeah, go. So I'm sorry for interrupting you. I just wanted to, because he, there's something that he didn't mention and I thought it was really cool. Uh, tactician mode is not only your little spies, the AI is also cranked up, right? That's true, yes. Yeah, can you tell me a bit of the things while these guys are trying to go through it? Uh, well, maybe you should keep an eye on it. Before we, well, don't move, Adam. Hmm? Hold that move. Tell me about <laughs> Brutal AI. All right, so Brutal AI, we want to make it feel like you're going against a DM that's, you know, trying to push you to your limits. So this is going to manifest in ways like attacking your more squishy characters. So going back to the bugbear and the uh, archer, maybe the archer is going to try to pick off Gale because he's in the back and squishy. And some really smart characters might even start targeting you for your concentration spells, trying to break those off. Wait a minute, I always play as a wizard, so this has consequences. Oh, just don't use concentration spells, you'll be fine. So if I do like, um, I don't know, give me an example of... Um, Let's say, um, uh, Cloud of Daggers. Cloud, Cloud of daggers. daggers. That's the one. I yeah, was, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I was trying to figure it out. Okay. Uh, Cloud of Daggers always con me requires me. concentration. Put it in front of a bad guy, right? Yeah, Pretty so you safe. expect the, the, the big bad guy to walk, walk through it. it? As it goes in video games. Yeah, maybe the goblin's going to try to shoot your uh, guy concentrating on the Cloud of Daggers. Instead of what their closest target would be or the actual the target that would have a higher chance for them to hit. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to shoot at my mage. Potentially, yes. Mm -hmm. So you got to be really careful and really smart about how you position your characters, how you're going to protect those characters in the back, and uh, keep those concentration spells up. Right. You need to know the rule set also when you're playing a tactician, right? So because you really need to start getting every single advantage that you can, because otherwise you're going to get obliterated. I've noticed among playtesters, and so I'm, I'm addressing the audience directly here, because I know you're all badass, and I know you're all going to play on tactician, because you just can handle it, and then you're going to start crying, and then you're going to say the game is bad. It's not our fault, it's you. <laughs> All right, so Him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you just go back to balance. That's how it's intended to be. If you go to tactician, you got to know what you're doing, because otherwise you really do get creamed. All right, this is, uh, I speak from experience. These two are going to demonstrate it. Can we see you in action on tactician? I'm sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, That's uh, well, fine. You, you're I'm able to change the uh, difficulty on the fly. All right. True also, uh, yeah. Here, so we switch to tactician. And uh, I guess, yeah, shall we? You go first, Adam. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I don't know why they're laughing. <laughs> so. Get over there! Surround them like! We don't need to listen to them. Attack. Looks like we're spotted, lads. So we got the initiative, which is great. Um, so, you see, before we snuck up on the roof, uh, we got up onto the roof. Um, it worked out well, but this time I'm actually going to go here. I'm going to take this one out first. I should be pretty sheltered from those guys here. And I'm going to use my silence over on these ones. That's actually quite smart. I think it's... Uh, you said that like it was really unexpected. It, I, He's a master, Sven. <laughs> I am too far away to do it, <laughs> which makes it less smart. So I'm going to make darkness over here so that anyone who comes down here is going to have difficulty shooting me. You look good with a few arrows. I always look good. Like this. Oh! That's what you meant with the... Oh, it's still a surprise. Yeah. So the barrel wasn't there before. Oh. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sven. <laughs> I, I assume you're applauding that I'm still standing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got an ID. I got an ID. Can you pick up your controller? Yes. She's now taking her controller and she's switching to controller mode. She's still dead. Doesn't help the situation. However, However, we have the Master of Combat sitting right here. I thought that was me. The second Master of Combat. <laughs> and he is going to demonstrate how well he knows this game by making all the difference. Matt Holland, with a round of applause, please pick up the second controller. Uh, and switch to split screen. All right, so all right. Tell, tell us what's going on, Matt. So we are now playing in uh, local split screen combat here, and player three has entered the game. So unlike uh, these guys, uh, I have decided to um, get ahead of the game. Uh, I didn't go in right away. I decided to sneak up behind the goblins. Uh, see, they're in combat, but the goblins haven't noticed me yet. So I get the opportunity to get a cheeky little shot off here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's do some dragon breath. See how they like that. It seems your actions have earned <laughs> you an enemy. <laughs> they, they they didn't like that very much. You weren't an enemy actually yet. Yeah, they didn't know him. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And because I used uh, my action to do the breath, I only have my bonus action left. But that's all right, because now I get to punch it. We like punching here. All right, that's one down, and uh, I'll end my turn. Maybe you want to guide at him? What? Just take a, a, accept advice from the master when it's your turn? I don't, I'm, I'm dead. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. We're just lying. Oh, we're very dead. Oh, you're yeah, all yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see it from here. I didn't even Usually get to do anything. I just walked in there. <laughs> uh, you died too. They got me too. <laughs> no, Adam did something. You passed the He's darkness. Fine. He passed the... <laughs> you going to solo this? Oh, yeah, our sound. We lost our sound. Uh, the sound of my... Silencing skills. <laughs> As I accidentally loot a corpse. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I don't know. This, this uh, looks a bit dicey, even for uh, the second master. Uh, but I'm going to go in. Are you telling me you're going to die? Um, that was the classic no ninja move again. <laughs> uh, and I'm actually I'm going to try to kite them here and uh, end my turn. See, that guy's really angry. He just wants to arrest me. Oh. Oh. That guy just summoned a warg on top of me. Um, I, it, is that part of the spice that you added, the warg? Uh, that is a bit of extra spice we added. Um, uh, and as much as I, I, I do like spice in my game, this one might be a bit spicy for just my little <laughs> monk here. Well, you can still help us, but I can't promise you would do any good. <laughs> I don't think I can. You're both dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did we die for real? Oh, oh yeah, okay. For, oh, no. Whenever you want to say it's that you admit defeat, Matt, it's fine. Eh? Uh, I, I clearly have to go and uh, learn from Sensei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> All right. Okay, <laughs> give it up for Matt Holland and team on combat. Uh, you were fantastic. Thank you. All these were fantastic. We're going to go now in the after show. Uh, the after show, uh, which uh, is going to be a bit of gameplay. It's really cool. 
it is very spoilery. You're going to meet one of the bad guys in the game. Uh, you're going to see those different perspectives. And then we're going to arguably see a very fucked up person. Uh, and then we're going to end. Uh, that's pretty much the summary of it. Yeah. All right. OK. Good. Uh, we can cut to me. Oh, we're already cut to me. Uh, so uh, I am Dark Urge. And I have just discovered this little hamlet uh, inside a place called the Shadow Cursed Lands. What came before? Uh, I was sent here. I finished early access. And uh, they said, you need to travel to Moonrise Towers. Uh, because in Moonrise Towers, you're going to find the secret that is responsible for what's happening inside of your head and the powers behind it. So I ventured to Moonrise Towers. And I could take two routes. I could go through the Underdark, which is one adventure that you could do in early access. And then there's more to, to come after that. Or I could go through a mountain pass. Very few people in the audience uh, have managed, actually, to get to the mountain pass. Some of them went there very fast, got their asses kicked, uh, as they should. And then they took a different route. And then they got their asses kicked, too, as they should. Uh, and so they found out that maybe it's worthwhile getting to that next level uh, from time to time. Uh, so, but they, they were brave, and they almost got into the Shadow Curse Land. Well, actually, no, somebody got into the Shadow Curse Lands, right? And then uh, encountered what that means. Uh, Shadow Curse Lands, which is what we call Act Two, for real, is a uh, it's a step up. Uh, it is uh, Act One was your tutorial. You learned how the systems work. You learned how many things uh, interact, connect with each other. From Act Two onwards, we start challenging you. We start saying, "Hey, you are now." a character, you're level five, level six, you know what you're doing. Let's throw a couple of new challenges at you. And the Shadow Curse is one of them. I'm not going to tell you how to deal with it. I'm not going to be that spoilery. But anyway, we managed to uh, uh, struggle through it. Uh, at least I managed to struggle through it, coming through the Underdark, while Adam will have taken the, la the overland route, uh, for reasons which he's about to explain. And I encountered this group of uh, uh, people who've managed to find a, protect themselves in a small enclave in the center of uh, the Shadow Cursed Lands. And so I'm going to go and ask them, uh, who am I? Who the hell are you? I don't have any sounds. Do you have sound? Can we have sound? Is there supposed to be sound? Come. Ah, there we go. Jahira. I'm going to tell her I am magic incarnate because I'm a sorcerer and these vines will not hold me. They'll last long enough. Magic incarnate. This is why we're here, you see. It is a curious creature that hides all manner of secrets. But if there's one thing that we know... knows its own kind. You should never have come here, true soul. Uh, I could rage against it, but I'm just going to say I'm not a true soul. I want to be friends with you, Jahira. I read about you. You're so cool. Stop! Hold on, Jahira. I think I know this one. His eyes meet yours. There's no recognition there, just a sick intensity as his voice reverberates in your mind. If you want to survive this, then trust me, one true soul to another. He's infected. I. But he's not with the cultists. They helped me fight them off a while back, in fact. Is this true? Interesting, because I made my save game on the fly. I'm off script again. There's some people in the audience that yesterday saw a version of this scene, and they saw a completely different version. There were other people here that came to save me. Now I am in a, uh, in a more difficult spot, because I will have to, uh, well, I'll have to lie, but this guy obviously infiltrated her camp. But then again, I'm dark urge, so I don't really care. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to say, yep, it's true. How is that possible? Um, 
The tadpole is afraid of me. <laughs> I've met no sorcerer that powerful. Met many. Now speak plain. How do you have control? Um, fine, I'll show her the artifact. The artifact is a spoiler which is responsible for my protection. You see, my companions really don't approve of this. Tell her everything I know, so that way. Congratulations! You've earned yourself the benefit of the doubt. Hear me, Harpers! All clear! At ease! I'll not pretend to understand what that artifact is. But I'm old and wise enough to recognize a sliver of hope when it crawls out of the dark. Tell me, why have you come here? Uh, I want a cure for my parasites. Then our interests align. We must all cure ourselves. Of the entire cult of the Absolute. There's food in the inn over there. Beds too, if you require rest. Aloe oil in the cupboard, in case the vines gave you a rash. Settle in. Then come join me for a drink. You may just be the godsend we've been praying for. All right. So this place can come in multiple configurations, depending on which party I have, what composition, what decisions I made. Uh, in this particular case, it's an interesting one because we got this traitor in there. Red means now. That's a different matter. Seems to be a problem with the sound because we. we I noticed a desync, but okay. We'll just live through it. Don't wander far. Please, be welcome. Have a drink. To your very good health. You perceive inviting hints of cedarwood and blackberry. Nothing out of the ordinary. I assure you it's quite safe. Bottoms up. You can see that my party is fairly distrustful and they don't approve of anything that's distrust. Be that's because they're on an evil path right now. Well over a century old and yet it hasn't lost a hint of flavor. Still not quite so sure, of, but people tend to lose more than just flavor when illithids get their hands on them. I speak from experience. As an air about you, something alien. Answer me true and do not lie. The parasite is changing you. Isn't it? It's trying to win me over, but I'm resisting his temptations. And you're certain you will continue to resist? Mm, we'll see. Look around you. Good men, good women. Stranded here, two feet in the grave. If we're to survive, I have no choice but to trust you. Can I? Not really. I am <laughs> Dark Urge. You can trust me. Good. Because I'll cross your heart myself if you break it. I have every reason to trust. I've traced people like you. People with parasites in their brains. All the way here from Baldur's Gate. The cult of the Absolute is spreading through the city. Quietly, quickly, and with unsettling deliberation. We tracked them to this ancient village, only to be faced with a man we killed and buried over a century ago. Well, maybe you should have hit him harder. Believe me, he was well and truly dead. I locked his corpse in the Thorn Mausoleum myself. He was a Sharan once. Took to building an army of dark justiciers beneath this very village. Alongside the local druids, we made it our business to see him deposed, dead and buried. But he's returned. Not only does General Ketherick Thorne live again, it seems he is no longer mortal. He has become, in fact, invincible. Oh, the sound is completely gone now. Commanding an army of the Absolute intent on destroying Baldur's Gate. 
I put an arrow through his eye myself. Only to watch him pluck it out like a splinter. He healed right in me and chased us into the shadows. Things looked hopeless. But experience has taught me that no matter how bleak things look, there's always hope. You are that hope. All right. Well, really? No. I do. <laughs> Protected by your artifact, you can infiltrate his forces at Moonrise Towers, posing as a true soul. Find out what it is that makes him invincible, so we can strip him of his advantage. Once Gatherick is without his shield, the sword, together we assault his tower and put a final end to this blight. All right, all right. Without a cure for your infection, your days are numbered too. Yet you selflessly offer to spend them fighting alongside us. I like you. I promise I will do everything I can to make sure you survive this. Any cure starts with understanding the disease. Whatever magic Gatherick's using to control these tadpoles, it must be at Moonrise. All right, well... Before you go, there's somebody else you should meet. You're not our only secret weapon. Isabel, a faithful cleric of Seluna, and a light in the darkness. She cast the moon shield at run. It's the only reason we're still alive. She's upstairs in her chambers. Tell her I sent you, and she'll see you through the shadows safely. All right. So, I'm gonna go... I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just go away and try to deal with it on my own, because that's how I play. Um, and I'm gonna pick up a quest from these guys, and then we will see what's gonna happen with that. Meanwhile, I think we can already cut to Adam. I'll pick up my quest and I'll go put myself in position, all right? Okay, we switch over. This is no ordinary darkness. It feels powerful and familiar. These lands have been blessed by Lady Shah. You must learn more about her presence here. Ah, uh, are you the true soul? So I came through Act 1 in a very different way. So Sven mentioned I didn't go through the Underdark. Uh, I came by the Mountain Pass, which is where Lysel's Gith crashes that she talks about a lot. Uh, and more importantly, you see my second option here, I was sent by Minthara. So I actually sided with the, uh, the Absolute. Uh, I went along with them. I massacred the Druid Grove in Act 1. Halsin's gone, sorry, no burst for you. And, uh, <laughs> and now I've arrived. I've arrived through a different route. I'm also playing as Shadowheart. So Shadowheart is my avatar. She's my origin character. And um, she feels resonance with this land. And I've got a little greeting here. Oh, bless the absolute. I couldn't take standing out here much longer. Grab a torch, stay out of the dark, and move fast. The shadows have eyes. Go on. Now, I'm not going to grab a torch because I'm Shadow Heart, and I am one with Lady Shah. So I think I can probably navigate this curse without help. You'd also notice I'm alone. Got a lot of trophies of companions in my pockets. You see, the Shadow Curse lands, it's incredibly bleak. There's color, there's these uh, blue spotted around the place. I can feel her. And there's chasms everywhere. It's a very, very sinister place. But uh, I've got friends here. And my friends aren't sheltering. They belong here. You You want the bone? I'm just going to observe. <laughs> you see that blight echo? Swallowed all by the shadow curse. Bet it was pure tasty. 
You're the true soul we're taking to Moonrise, I'm guessing. I am. I was sent here by Manthara. Right you are. Go through and talk to Kansif. He's been waiting. I will, but uh, I didn't like what he did to the hyena, so he can go get the bone. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you're joking, yeah? As you all know by now, I don't make jokes. Go. You just need to tell Kansif inside. I'm a cleric of Shah. This is Sharon Lands. I'm going to tell her, tell him that I'll strike him down with the power of the divine. So you want me to? I mean, I'll just. I'll just go and, uh... No! No! Shadowheart approves. True soul. An honor. Did you bring the liar? I did. Minthara gave me a liar. She told me that playing this would summon a guide through the darkness. Then pluck a tune, and our guide will come scuttling. Now I'm a cleric, not a bard, but... <laughs> It'll be fine. charged with guiding us no flesh for you, my queen but who are they best introduce yourself perhaps you'll listen to a true soul so i think these are far more interesting friends than the harpers <laughs> and uh i'm gonna see if he will take me to moonrise as i was told and you, what are you, apart from a torturer of liars? More faithful of the others. She needs a guide to the tower, same as us. Your minds connect, and you hear a whispered voice. The absolute, or just the echoes of his fractured mind reverberating in the dark. <laughs> A true soul. You have more worshippers every day, Majesty. Yes, yes, she'll do nicely. So we could ask him some more questions, of course, but I'm just actually going to follow him. I'm going to go along with him. Very well. Gather the flock. Bless us again, Majesty. Shine your light. Protect us. Come, follow and stay close. Do not leave the light. Do not feed the shadows. You heard him. Move out. So now we're traveling through these shadow cursed lands. As I said to you, Shadowheart doesn't need protection here. These guys do. That's why they got the torches. Torches will protect you um, unless you go too deep. Shadow Curse gets more dangerous the deeper you go. We should stay in the light. Wants to become shadows. So we're going to stay with him. You can see this border here. This is from this lantern that he's carrying. And that's what's actually protecting us. I do want to loot this outhouse, but I'm not going to. It's too risky. <laughs> they must keep up. The shadows are hungry. And this is a pretty vast place, the Shadow Curse Lands, but I've got a guide, so we'll get to Moonrise. Never good when you fail a perception roll. Patience, Majesty, you bless us with patience. Wait. Something's wrong, Majesty. Who's there? Show yourself! 
Harper's attack! Kill the cultists and get that lantern! Halatrax! Villains in the dark! These Harpers are clearly enemies of the Absolute. They could be worthwhile allies. But defend the guide and you may preserve your cover as a true soul. So I'm going to switch back to Sven now while I decide what to do here. When you come back, you'll see what I did. You can make a guess. Uh, but you see, I started on this route. So I've gone this more evil route. I'm with the Dryder, but I still can switch sides. I'm not locked into this route. I can go with the Harpers now. They don't know who I am yet. I'd have to explain myself, but we'll see where Sven is. So I am to your church every day, my queen. Your followers are legion. Go. We'll wait for your signal. Your faith will stand ready, Majesty. Soon we march. Soon the world will bow to you. Here, where boss? Something moved up there. Want me to drag it out? All right, so I went with the Harpers, we went on a mission, we want to steal the mechanic that the uh, evil guys are using to traverse the Shadowlands because we can't get closer to the, to the uh, Moonrise Towers. So I'm going to use my tadpole trying to convince them that I am a true soul. So clear a throat to make yourself known. Knowing that I have the full power of the Harpers behind me. What's this? The Drider's eyes cut through the darkness, locking on you as your parasite squirms with excitement. Your minds connect, and you hear a voice whispering to you. The Absolute, or just the echoes of his fractured mind reverberating in the darkness. Oh, one of your true souls, my queen. How have they survived? All right, I'm going to say that the Absolute protected me. You bless them too, my queen. Wh where is the lantern? I'm going to say the absolute guided me to you. I got plus four, plus three, plus three, so I should be good. I'm going to add a bonus with another guidance roll. I think I'll manage. Serve you well? <laughs> Very well. If it is your will, we can have it. All right, so I am going to be a little bit more evil than that. I'm going to tell him you may go now. What do you mean, go? We can't go without you. The shadows will tear us to pieces. This is not Her Majesty's will. I think it is. No, there, you carry the blessing of the Absolute. I'm a sorcerer. You'll be safe. Right, where did the... Oh. Uh, I think I should manage. With all of that stuff. Uh... You can't be serious. You know what's out there. If it is Her Majesty's will, then we shall walk! She will protect us. She? She must. if I hadn't just seen it. Nicely done. Now let's see what we've got here. All right, let's go and have a look at that moon lantern. Ahead. One less light in the darkness. The lantern gives off a chilly glow, protecting all in its vicinity from the surrounding shadows. Incredible magic. I can feel the light lifting the shadows, even those within me. Oops. 
We expect no less. You notice a tiny pixie trapped within. These fey creatures are infamous for their trickery. Sometimes playful, sometimes malicious. Oh please, oh golly, me oh my. You must release me or I'll die. This lantern only lights the way when I am hurting night and day. All right, what are we going to do? Release it? Use it? I'll let chat decide. So what is it, releasing it? I hear more releases than I hear ignoring, so we're going to... It looks like releasing it. Finally! Been trapped in that coffin with no one but a Madge Rider and my own farts for company. Did me a good turn there, didn't you? What do I owe you? Uh, this is a Dark Urge moment. Beautiful thing it would be to end the life in this first moments of freedom, which is like really... I, I do, but I'm going to refuse. I'm going to ask for help. Because I sure need to I show can. you something. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Here, give this bell a shake. Speak the magic words and you'll get what you've earned. Protection from the shadow curse. What more could a dingus want? You're welcome. And off she goes. All right, so Cute Adam, will you? Yeah, you want to see how I'm getting on? Get to see some interesting things. Almost makes the mortal peril worth it. So if we move back to me now, I will show you Shadow Hearts continuing adventures. Can we come back to my screen? Oh, I was heading out. Thank you very much. So. Um, I'm not going to show you the fight, um, but the Driders are now mince meat. Uh, sorry, the Harpers. The Driders are absolutely fine. Don't worry about him. And by the way, I always say this at this point, but I'm the bad guy here, apparently. Because <laughs> I, I think the Driders is quite a sweet fellow. Uh, so we have actually arrived at Moonrise Towers uh, after slaughtering those Driders. Harpers, sorry. New meat Drider. <laughs> oh, the queen sent them. Her Majesty's flesh grows full and glorious. <laughs> Helped us with some harpers on the way, too. They're shadow bait now. <laughs> Move. His thoughts seek yours, searching, grasping. Your parasite squirms in recognition. Disciples are rails in the Great Hall. She'll be wanting to see you. You, head on in. The others will go in, but I will go up. And my queen summons me to her chapel to be in her presence. I hear you, sweet majesty. I am coming, the Queen. Okay, so I can now get inside Moonrise Towers. This is the headquarters of the Cult of the Absolute, as far as we're aware. That's what we've been told. Now, Minthara sent me here, you remember. I mean, Thara in Act 1 is actually looking for something specific. I'm not going to go into too many spoilers, but she didn't find it, even though we helped her. So we massacred all those people at the Grove. We didn't actually find what we were looking for. So as we enter Moonrise Towers, if I talk to all these people, this is a full hub. There's traders here, there's quest givers, there's all kinds of little stories going on. But these are people who are flocking to the Call of the Absolute. Uh, they've either already signed up or they want to sign up. But we're going to go into the main hall. We're going to meet our good friend and lover, Minthara. And we're going to meet General Kethrick Thorne. I will not be slandered! General, you saw my reports. You know it's not my fault. The facts suggest otherwise. You were ordered to retrieve the artifact. You failed to do so. If I had been given drow warriors instead of goblin trash! Oi! What? You scrag! Enough! 
A blast of mental energy washes over you, filling the room. Your tadpole squirms, urging you to obey. Let me make sure I understand this. You're claiming that General Thorne gave you the wrong soldiers. Yes! No! You blame the Absolutes chosen for your failure. Of course it is not the General's fault. Who's then? So, I'm not going to ask chat here because I really don't want Minthara to get executed. So, I'm going to try and mentally influence Rel to show mercy. When it's just luck, I'm pretty good at the game. <laughs> Zarel's mind is a steel trap, but you cautiously ease your way in. You just need to shift her focus a little. I'm being unkind. Anyone might have struggled with such imperfect tools. Goblins are prone to failure. Yes, it's the goblins' fault. They failed you, General. Not me. General? Take Minthara below. Someone will have to consider her fate. No! Please! Mercy! Please! <laughs> bye bye, Princess. And the goblins, General. You, true soul. You have seen what these creatures are capable of, and you have seen their inadequacies, isn't that so? What is your judgment? We did as we were told! We're loyal to the Absolute! Tell him! Enough! True soul, tell the General how the goblins served our cause. Well, I did see the horrors they committed in the Absolute's name. I committed those horrors alongside them, so I'm going to pick two. to be appreciated. I'm sure they were very enthusiastic. But zeal without efficacy is for children, not servants. We are too close to the ending and the new beginning. I can coddle failure no longer. Kill them quickly. She's an unbeliever outside my control. Try again. as you see fit. Or better yet, put that true soul to use. You have far more important matters to attend to. Or have you forgotten? Of course it's not. Thank you. You heard the general. The goblins are yours. Deal with them however you wish. I'm going to enjoy this. Do you? Here in the seat of the Absolute's power, your authority over them is complete. They will obey any command. Report to me upstairs when you're done. Yeah, you ain't gonna do anything drastic, are ya? We've been nothing but loyal! I'm gonna do something very drastic, chat. Uh, we're gonna do one or two. We're not going to do three or four because that's not the kind of person I am right now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's guts. <laughs> no. Please. Oh. 
so now I am in Moonrise Towers. I've established myself as a true soul. I've met Catherick Thorne. Uh, Disciples Rel wants me to report to her, but uh, my friend Minthara was dragged downstairs. I'm not going to show you anymore. Too many spoilers. But I could go downstairs. I could try and rescue Minthara. I could go upstairs, see what other jobs they've got for me. I could start exploring. I could go massacre Jahira, which would be fun. But I'm going to leave it here. And I'm going to pass back over to Sven to see if he's made any progress. Looks like he has. Things are less exciting over here. I'm like, where the fuck is Moonrise Towers? Right? So I'm <laughs> just traveling in the shadow, in the shadow curse lands. I'm just exploring and encountering the, the history of what happened here, the entire history of how Ketrick Thorne became who he, who he was, everything that was hinted at in the Underdark. I'm uncovering more. Uh, and I found this place, and it turns out to be oh. a hospital. Here to see the doctor? Are we poorly? Are we desperately poorly? Or oh, not so well. But well enough to wait. Your line, and you will be seen. All right. So, uh, I'm going to... I need to see the doctor right now. Yes, yes. But all must wait. The doctor's hands are full. Sounds familiar. Your line. You will be seen. Oh, I'm going to do my deception because that's clearly my forte. Oh, I can even add friends on top of it, but I think this should be sufficient. Didn't need all of it. Oh, an answer to our prayers. Down to the theater. Be swift. Be saved. All right. So let's go to the theater for the final bit of Act 2 that we're going to show you for today. I'm going to do the really stupid thing. I'll just go say hi. So something's happening here. The objective of the Scalpel Sisters is to soothe. Oh, the shit. scalpel indeed is an extension of shame. Something went wrong. Yeah. See how the patient oh. reacts when I'm sorry. Something went wrong. I can't do that. Because I'm going to show something that I don't want to show. All right. So, uh, I'm going to have to go to the main menu. My version has been a uh, suffering. I don't know if the sound, because my sound was very off synced. I don't know if that came through. Uh, so we're not going to end on this finale. I'm really sorry. Uh, but I mean, as you could see, we had to reset uh, midstream, and that caused some technical difficulties, uh, so, uh, from which we didn't 100% recover, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, with that uh, all set, I hope you enjoyed it, despite the technical difficulties. Uh, this is going to be a goodbye uh, for now, so because we, we need to know uh, what just exactly happened. Uh, nonetheless. There's a lot of stuff for you to discover in the game. I hope you are going to enjoy it when it releases uh, in a month from now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, like. Uh, I got it. Oh, you have it? Yeah, yeah. OK, all right. Go uh, for give it. Give me one second. And yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Adam's going to do what we wanted to end on. Yeah. So uh, two minutes while I get it up on here. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I clearly was on the, on the, the, the doomed version. Yeah, you were on the doomed one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what would have happened at this point is uh, I potentially would have got some quests within Moonrise uh, from my new evil friends. Um, they would send me back out into the Shadowcast lands. I'm not going to tell you why they would do that, but uh, I would end up going back out there. Uh, again, remember, I'm playing Shadowheart here. Um, this is my lady's land. Uh, so, if we switch to me now, we should... Actually, don't switch to me just yet. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Ignore the man behind the screen. We're certainly not improvising. No, no, no. Never have, never so will. OK, that's absolutely fine. Nothing to see here. So here I am. And if we could get sound as well. I'm going to get past. So I can convince her to let me pass because I'm a cleric and I tell her I'm a healer. And you can see the hospital has seen better times, as the Shadow Curse lands in general have. The objective of the Scalpel Sisters is to soothe. For the Scalpel indeed is an extension 
of Sha. See how the patient reacts when I would stroke the right nerve. Hear its comfort, hear the very melody of mercy. Pray, sister, show us the extent of your beneficence. Stop, stay your hand, for it slaps where it should stroke. We can hardly hear the patient's sighs of solace. Perhaps it is our unexpected audience that makes you quiver. Come, step forward. I can see the love of Shah darken your eyes. Be welcome. So he recognizes that I'm a Sharon, um, and I'm going to say you teach Shah's waves with grace, but for such an altered being. Not altered, sister. Elevated. Long have I basked in Shah's embrace. A vessel of her will I have become. Tell me, what is the guiding principle of the goddess? I'm not going to let chat vote. I know. I know my dogma. Precisely. Absence. No other word captures the heart of Shah so very perfectly. It is the scalpel-led journey that leads from pain to peace. See? What is the light of eyes but the cancer that causes one to witness the laceration of being? If light is the symptom, then darkness is the cure. For in light there is present, but in darkness there is absence. In light is presence, in darkness, absence. But you, look how the succor of Shah eludes even you. One who walks faithfully in her shadow. See how painfully present you remain. We do not wish to see you suffer so. Let us cure you. Well, it doesn't seem like a great idea to be cured by this guy. So I'm going to say I don't think the sisters are ready. I did that. I think I'm OK. I should have inspiration yeah i've been gathering up inspiration as i played so uh fingers crossed i will add my bonus as well yeah their incisions are as yet still streaked with imprecision that much i must convince how to steady their hands, I wonder. So, you've got a choice here. You can either pick number one, tell them to practice on a better subject, or we can have them practice on each other. One or two. One. Chat's very two. It's two. Chat's saying two. No. <laughs> this one's pretty tough. <laughs> and, oh no. So like everyone else in BG3, if I fail this, then it's not the end of the game. I can fight this guy. We don't know what'll happen if I fail, but... If worst comes to worst, I can fight him. Worst may be coming to worst. <laughs> oh, you got that one. Uh, what are your harpers now? Yes. <laughs> yes. For are we not all in need of a cure? The scalpel does not discriminate. 
Let each and every one of you partake in its soothing journey. Absent sisters, acquaint yourselves. It is a proud moment when one sees one's teachings so lovingly taken to heart. You are to be commended for their graduation, rewarded with the promised cure. Come, I will acquaint you with the lady's dark fingered embrace. Okay, so I got rid of his minions. We're going to try to get rid of him as well. Yes. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Last one. How much did you give your, yourself? <laughs> Four. I earned this. <laughs> So, inspiration is shared by the party. All the party members I killed earned this for me. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is better for you, because this is a lot of fun, slash, horrible. Your diligence is exemplary. Very well. Your own scalpel you will be. Observe, then succeed me into the sucker of Shah. 